All right, welcome back. Uh, I'm just going to point out right up front that I am a little sick right now, which is why I've uh, taken a little bit to post this tutorial. And uh, it's also why there's soon to come up, eventually, a blooper reel. There are no words for the number of mistakes I've made trying to make this tutorial. <laughs> but uh, anyway, what this tutorial is going to be, someone in the comments in another one of my videos, if I remember right, it's uh, the Lunar Transfer tutorial, uh, expressed some frustration try attempting to launch the Delta Glider. At the time, I was also hoping to do a uh, International Space Station rendezvous, as in uh, this is information won't only work for the ISS. This is going to be uh, something you can use for rendezvousing with pretty much any object in, uh, in orbit. So, without further ado, uh, actually, on an unrelated note, normally, uh, normally I would start paused in the given ship that I'm going to be flying w w while I talk about it, but I realized visually that's kind of boring. Also, uh, if I sound a little stuffed up, that's, again, because I'm sick. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to hit the button on my microphone whenever I need to cough or sneeze or something. But I uh, apologize if I do fail to do so. Right now, we are in a MMU. That is a manned maneuvering unit. Essentially, when astronauts are spacewalking and they are not tethered to their ship for whatever reason, they are in one of these. That because obviously you can't swim through space. There's really no other way to get back. So coincidentally, if you take a look at my uh, multifunction displays, I don't have much of an orbit. This is on purpose. While I'm talking, you get to watch my MMU burn up. So what I'm going to do, once I pass the Karman line, that is 100 KMs, that is the border of space, I'm going to hit F1, and you're going to be able to watch my poor MMU burn while I explain what's going on. So here's the plan. Originally, I wanted to use hovers for a uh, graduated takeoff, but I found that's a little difficult. you got to time that just right. So to make things easier for you guys, I'm going to do this launch in several stages. First, we are going to launch directly upwards to get to our altitude. Once we uh, reach space, we're going to burn and give ourselves speed. We're going to continue burning until we reach an... Hold on. <coughs> Sorry about that. Until we reach an orbit which is pretty similar to the uh, International Space Station. So essentially, we're going to be using our hovers past the uh, Karman line to adjust our apoapsis and raise our periapsis until our eccentricity approaches zero. I'm going to take the time that we're using during those burns to re-explain that, since people have asked about that. And uh, for whatever reason, my previous tutorials did not explain that well enough, or whatever. I'm going to explain it. So here's our flight plan. We are going to start off with our landing gear down at what's essentially a helipad at uh, Kennedy. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our hovers. That is, we're going to use our hover drive, which is, don't worry, that's not some futuristic thing. It's just rockets pointing downwards. It's, it's nothing. We're going to use that to take some of the weight off our tires and such. Once we have that, I'm going to tilt upwards. That is, I'm going to pull back on the stick until I'm at 45 degrees. Just to give you an idea of exactly what 45 degrees is, Right now I'm at negative 90. I'm going to pull up. So right now, this is zero degrees. Well, one degree, but I'm, I'm nitpicking. Perfectly up would be 90. Half of 90 is 45. So I'm going to angle myself like this, and I'm going to gun it. Well, not 48, I want 45, but you get the point. I'm going to get as close, I'm going to get somewhere between 40 and 50, 
use my engines to get off the ground, and once I'm off the ground, I'm going to tilt back up towards a perfect 90. So I'm going to point straight up. Now, I just passed the Carmen line, exactly as I said the uh, K in Carmen line. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go down. You see my uh, static pressure increasing, so I'm probably about to start burning up. So here's our flight plan. You already have most of the skills needed to do this. Nothing really new is... Ah, oh, there's my fire being introduced here. Nice hypersonic boom there. That's nice. Anyway, we are going to launch upwards, which you learned how to do in the uh, shuttle tutorial. I'm going to give you a little modification on that because the delta glider is uh, flexible like that. Once we're up, we're going to establish an orbit, which you know how to do. Although, I, what I gave you in the launch liftoff tutorial was very specific to the space shuttle. Once, now that you understand the general idea of how an orbit works, I'm going to show you how you can uh, be a little flexible with it. From there, once we have our orbit established, we're going to align planes, which you learned how to do in the lunar transfer tutorial. Once we have our planes aligned, uh, just a little reminder to anyone who's just dropping in on this lesson. This is not the first lesson. This lesson builds upon previous ones. Take a look through my channel. Seriously. Don't, don't confuse yourself. Look through my channel for uh, the previous videos before you watch this one. Anyway, uh, now that all the people who found, who, found who found their way here through uh, curiosity can start off at the beginning. Those of you that I did not just lose... After we align our planes, that is, after we get our inclination identical to uh, the International Space Station's inclination, we're going to increase our apoapsis. That way it takes me a longer amount of time to get around that circle. By adjusting my apoapsis, I can make it so me and the International Space Station arrive at a given point at the same time. Once, once we do that, I'm going to introduce an entirely new skill, which is uh, something called translation, linear translation. No, you're not learning an another language. Up until now, you've been manipulating your ship using a joystick or a keyboard. You've been, uh, you've been using angles and uh, directly engaging and disengaging your engines to do things. I'm going to show you how to, uh, well, think of it this way. Let's take a look at this MMU. If you have this at a high enough resolution, you can see that uh, this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole, you see some holes here. These are pretty much replicated on whatever ship you're flying. Now, the way that would usually work, let's say that I wanted to... Uh, Let's say I wanted to spin to the left. Let's say I wanted to fall to my left here. These two would engage. Alright, bad example. These two would engage. And uh, these two on the bottom would engage. That will cause me to rotate to the left. Uh, over as if I were falling over. Now what happens if I don't want to rotate to the left, I just want to push myself to the left. I'm sitting here, I want to continue facing this way, but I want to push myself this way. Linear translation engages this entire side of thrusters at once and no other thrusters. That way it'll just push me to the left or push me to the right, push me up, push me down, push me forward, push me back without changing my angle. That's what we're going to use for docking with the ISS once we approach it. Now, without further ado, Delta Glider. Yes, uh, wait, no, you guys can't see it in, uh, fraps. What I was going to point out was, uh, when I created this MMU, I, call, I uh, nicknamed it LOL. Anyway. Here I have the Delta Glider. As promised, I'm on a pad. And you can see that uh, I'm on the ground. 
Now what I'm going to do, when we dock, we're going to dock using this port in the front here. But there's no port, you say. That nose cone opens up, believe it or not. So using F1 and F8 to uh, get to this display, which, uh, actually, let me use this F8. I want to look down. I want to look to the right here. This lever right here is my nose cone. If I press that, unstable means and flashing means it's currently opening, which let me show you that. Oh, look, suddenly I have a docking port. That's not all the way open. There we go. Solid. And it says open. Now to close that again, I press this lever, and you'll see it's going to start closing. You're going to want that closed while lifting off, because I'm sure you, have so, you all have some basic idea of aerodynamics. Uh, a uh, a uh, paper airplane flies because it's created in an aerodynamic way. If you throw a crumpled up piece of paper, it's not going to go particularly far. So that's closed. Another thing I'm going to introduce is retros, which I think I actually pointed out in my last tutorial, but we're going to be using them a little more extensively. But let me actually show you how to manipulate those through here. Retro doors, open. Again, flashing means it's they're not open yet. Solid, they're open. Again, I don't want these open while we're lifting off or within atmosphere because you can imagine the kind of drag they're going to uh, create. So those are closing. Here's my takeoff sequence here. What I'm going to do, you can actually see on the bottom here. You see those uh, holes in the bottom? Those are my those are my uh, hovers. I'm going to engage my hovers to decrease the amount of force uh, that's pulling me to the ground, or rather neutralize it as best I can. It's not going to allow me to take off that way because Earth's gravity is too great. But I'm going to use that to tilt back 45 degrees. That is, my nose is going to go like this. Once it's up here, I'm going to press my engines, which is going to cause me to go this way. Once I have a decent bit of distance from the ground, I'm going to go straight up, 90 degrees up. At that point, I'm going to withdraw my landing gear because that's going to create drag. By withdrawing my landing gear, I mitigate, I mitigate the drag. I'm going to go straight up until I breach the Karman line. Once I breach that Karman line, that is 100 km's, I'm going to start angling for an actual orbit. You'll see how I'm going to do that. So, uh, without further ado, which uh, I've said that multiple times already, let's start this. Where on earth Okay, looks like I have to do it from this. There we go. 